two different drills to fix a disconnected swing. What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with Matt Antonelli. Antonelli Baseball first round draft pick. We were teammates together in pro baseball and he's going to talk about two different drills to fix a disconnected swing. First of all, what is a disconnected yeah, I was swing? Start with that. And then uh, what are the drills? Sure. So uh, when I think of a disconnected swing, a couple things. I think real basically or real basic, what you want to feel with your swing when you make a turn is that I want to feel like my barrel can stay tight to my body, that everything is working together. So I don't want to be dominated by just my arms, which can be this way or this way. I want to feel like when I turn, essentially my lower body is going to start to work and now my upper body and my barrel are going to start to work like that from the inside. So I want to feel like I'm from the inside, my barrel's tight to my body, and I can release the bat out to wherever the ball is. Um, so that's what I feel like is a, is a connected swing. So a disconnected swing is again, when, I, when there's distance here, this way, so my barrel's getting away from my body, sometimes that's caused by coming up and out of your swing. It can be caused by a lot of things. This rear arm kind of dropping in early and you'll see this move where the barrel's working way, way uphill. Um, and so, and you can see it also by hitters that kind of want to throw their arms and throw the bat out here. And now my arms and my upper body are beating my lower body. So how do you, how do you fix that? Um, couple ways. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll use this connection ball. And so, all we do is we put the ball right here, basically resting up against the forearm and then the uh, bicep. And you're gonna have your, your hand, your top hand, right here on the ball, All right? So we'll take a bat. I'm gonna be in this position. Now, when I get here and ready to hit, I can no longer just use my arms. If I, if I go like that, the ball pops out of my arms, right? And so I have to feel this connection between my arms and bat and my, my body. So if I start to turn now, right? So here I go to start to turn. The only way I can keep this ball in this position is I've got to work everything together. So my leg starts to turn forward and now my upper body, and you can see my barrel starting to go back this way. And as I keep coming, see how that keeps me tight and from the inside. Now, eventually when I hit the ball, the ball's going to come out but there's a difference between having the ball fall out after my swing. So basically I'm coming through contact and the ball falls out and the ball falling out really early when I make this move like this, okay? The second thing, this, I, I mentioned earlier, this rear arm right here is really important for not allowing your barrel to do this. So when I look at young players, probably the biggest thing I see is this arm either never getting into a good strong hitting position. So by hitting a strong hitting position, I just mean that this elbow is going to be behind your top hand. So in this position and everyone's a little bit different, but the young players I see want to do this and this arm never gets up. And when this arm doesn't get up and behind your hands, it's going to leave the swing, which causes your bell to drop. So the other thing that this does is when I get into this position right here, automatically my arm gets behind my hands my elbows behind my hands and so now again i can't do this move right here so this pins up here and now i can work and see how my arm goes under with my hand they're connected it's not just an, an all arms move again which i can't really do with the ball um, so that's the first drill the second one if you don't have a ball, it's pretty similar to that one. If you don't have a ball, we just call it bat on the neck. So essentially we'll take the bat and we're gonna put the bat right here where your neck is kind of meeting your shoulder. And so I pin the bat right there. Now when I get ready to hit, it's the same idea. I don't wanna let the bat come off of my neck. So I wanna feel like I can turn my body and that bat's gonna stay there continue to stay there. Now, eventually the bat is going to come off my neck, but if I let the bat come off early, so as a hitting coach, if you're standing right there and you're just watching this bat. If you see this bat come off early off of my neck, you know that something got disconnected. Again, whether it's my arm coming this way, whether it's my body pulling off 
like that. And so I've got to keep my bat on my neck all the way through my turn, hit the ball. And if you do that, you know that you're pretty connected and your barrel's working from the inside and not getting out around the ball. I think maybe we should talk about why a disconnected swing is bad. Yep. And from my experiences, because you're getting, getting longer yep. and you're getting slower, right? Sure. Is that right? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So the teach that we talk about when it comes to bat path, two things, is that I want my barrel to turn and be, we call it behind the ball. So essentially, if the ball's right there, I want my barrel working behind it this way. So it's slightly up, right? And so if I get disconnected, then it's hard for me to work slightly up. So there's a couple of different moves. I get disconnected this way, like we talked about. When that hitter starts to work in, we've all seen the hitters, especially the young hitters, they're coming in at an extreme up angle because they lose the barrel back here. Now they've got to try to get it back on path and they can't do it because they're under the ball. So that would be an issue with a disconnected swing is that my barrel isn't working behind the ball like this. But the other part of it that we mentioned earlier is I want to be from the inside. So I want, when I am connected and I work here, this barrel's right off my shoulder. So I'm inside the ball and I can let it out whenever I want. So if the ball's out, I can let it out to the outside, but it's from the inside, right? So now I can drive the ball to right center field. If the ball's middle and I'm tight, I can release the barrel to the middle, or if the ball's in, I can release it to the pull side. And when I'm hitting the ball, I'm always flushing the ball up. So I'm attacking the ball slightly from the inside all the time. And so I can drive the ball a good backspin. But like you mentioned, if you get disconnected from your body, right? You do this or you do this. Now your barrels, one, going to take forever to get there, right? So we talk about bat speed is important, but bat quickness is really important as well. You can have great bat speed, but really bad bat quickness and you're not gonna be able to hit, right? So there's obviously big time time constraints in baseball. You have less than four tenths of a second to get yourself to that ball because that's all, that's all the time you have. And so if I'm getting long and disconnected, it's gonna be really difficult for me to be able to hit a ball coming in at even 80 miles an hour, really difficult. Can you get away with a really long disconnected swing as a 10 year old? Yeah, maybe, but if you continue to work on that disconnected swing, there's gonna come a point where you, you can't play anymore, right? So can I get my barrel behind the ball? Can I get my barrel from the inside out instead of from the outside in, which takes too long? The way I like to think about that too, and I talk about this from the pitching perspective as well a lot, is like if you were running with a flag, <clears throat> a flag pole here and you got the flag, if you're running this way, that flag is gonna be blowing behind you. Same thing, if this is your flag pole and you're whipping this out, your flag is gonna wanna go this way. Mm -hmm. Whether we're talking about hitting or pitching, pitching guys yep. flying out, the arm's gonna fly out. Hitters, this is flying out, the hands are gonna naturally work away from you. So you may not even be trying to do that. You may be trying to pull this in, but if you're pulling your energy out this way, you're working against yourself. So kind of understanding that, Matt actually made a great video before where you had your head on the fence over here. I'll leave a link down to that video. It's called the uh, three, I don't know what it's called yet, but three hitting drills with Matt yep. Antonelli. Check that one out, because that third drill he put on that video is really awesome and can help with the disconnected swing as well. And one, one quick tip, because mm -hmm. you just mentioned that what happens a lot is a player will take a swing, let's say a disconnected swing, they get long, they get around the ball, they roll over. What does every coach say? stay inside the ball, stay inside the ball, right? I had this with me as an older player. I started to get disconnected and I rolled over a lot. And the coach would say, stay inside the ball. And I'd say, okay. And the next swing, I'd try to stay inside the ball, but my swing was built like you just did to do this. So I'd do it again. And they'd say, stay inside the ball. And I'd say, I'm trying, in my mind, I'm saying, I'm trying to stay inside the ball. Do it again. And I, so, just saying stay inside the ball, like those simple teaches, you know, maybe sometimes they work, but if you've got a player that's really disconnected, you can say stay inside the ball a hundred times. It doesn't mean the player's gonna be able to make an adjustment. I was there as a 25 year old. Just imagine an eight year old, a 12 year old, a 14 year old. Like they don't know, okay, I'm, I'm getting around the ball. I'm not from the inside. What, why, what is going on in my swing? So if you can show the hitter and explain it, and then you can give a drill now they go, oh, that's, that's how I get inside the ball. I know I want to get inside the ball. Now I know how to get inside the ball. So that's, that's helpful. You said something there that you said my swing was built that way. And that made me think of 
building the elite swing. You've got a program, it's got many drills, over 30 different drills. It talks about the fundamentals of hitting and how to build an elite swing. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link down below where you can find that really good stuff. I also wanna mention that this uh, connection ball, I sell it on Ugo Pro Baseball. One thing that's really cool about this is, you can just take the air out of it. So it's basically one size fits all. If you've got a younger player, you just deflate it a little bit, right? Because obviously a, a nine-year-old is not gonna be the same size as Matt. So you kind of deflate it a little bit and now you've got a ball to work with any uh, age player. So that's something cool. I'll leave the link down below where you can check that out. Other than that, that's a, that's a great video. I think maybe the only thing we could add to this is kind of what we talked about in the last video is not every drill is for everybody. Mm -hmm. This, These two drills are to help guys with the disconnected swing. You're not running every single guy through these two drills. Right, when I'm looking at a player, I'm evaluating them and say, okay, what do they not do well? Do they get out to the front side early? Do they have a disconnected swing? Whatever it is. And then hopefully through these videos, you've got a database of a bunch of drills. So you can say, okay, this player does this, this drill helps with this. This player has a disconnected swing, okay, let's get him the tap ball, let's get him, you know, bat on the neck. And so now you can start to build the drills for the individual player and not just have the drills for everybody. Because if a player has a really solid swing as far as being connected from the inside, why, why spend your time working on that? If you have an hour to work with a player, why spend 15 minutes on that when we could be spending 15 minutes because you know they can't stay around this leg and stay loaded, they fall forward. Okay, let's just go right to that issue right away. And if down the road the swing gets disconnected, oh, I got a drill for that, let's go to that drill. So that's how it should work. There you go, guys. You heard it from the man himself. Go follow him on YouTube, Antonelli Baseball, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. If you got a comment, question, drop it down below. We'll see you guys in the next video. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick, and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly, step-by-step, step, how to generate power, develop bat speed, and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level.